this shadow cast from your projection. Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome to another lyric analysis. Today's song is called Things Aren't What They Seem. It is song number 18 overall and the third song in the purple section. This song is essentially about medical gaslighting. One problem in mental health is putting all the blame on the patient. Like, oh, they have anxiety, they have to take medication. Well, what about their environment? What about the way that their family dynamic is? And so what happens is then the scapegoat of the family ends up being you know, the problem person even more so, and they have to take medications, they have to change. Well, what about everyone else? Especially if it's like a child or dependent adult or, you know, the three people you can't abuse. A child, an elderly person, or a dependent adult. So let's get into the lyrics. There are some things in here in a lot of the songs I don't want to face. But not facing them is even worse. First line, I'll do anything you say. I am desperate to change. Earlier on in my healing journey, I trusted doctors and mental health professionals as gods and my own symptoms and truths as inferior. Because <laughs> that dynamic is something I've experienced of having my own feelings and sensations doubted and deferred to someone else who decides how I am supposed to feel. This was especially problematic at the Laguna Beach Partial Hospitalization and Intensive Outpatient Program. The scapegoat role of I'm the problem, there's something wrong with me was just confirmed there. So I took even more of the blame on myself and because of the environment I was in, it basically confirmed all the horrible things that I thought about myself were true. And it led to a severe decline in mental health after you know, getting a job for the who knows how times, even though my symptoms did not allow it at the time, it then led to three years of hospitalizations, chronic suicidal thoughts, um, screaming out loud, just let me die. It was, it made it worse. I was looking for someone to help me just be happier and they basically all the horrible things you think about yourself are true or confirming it. My ex also did that. Anyway, so I deferred to their opinions over mine because that's what I've always been taught to do. Next, the medications are piling up. Polypharmacology, just basically where you mix a bunch of Medications together, and we don't really know what they do or how they interact, but we'll just hope that you're going to be okay. And we haven't done any studies on the long-term consequences, but eh, whatevs. <laughs> it's very common. But if you just keep drugging someone without looking at the family dynamics, you're not getting to the core of the problem. The symptoms don't match the diagnosis. In my past, people have thought I've had some kind of personality disorder like histrionic personality or borderline. And my psychiatrist last visit, who I have like a good working relationship with, was finally like, yeah, like after getting to know you, like these don't fit. I know we don't talk about diagnosis a lot, but I just wanted to let you know. And I was like, yeah, I thought so. I'm self-aware enough to like look at them and I'm reading them and I'm like, this just isn't resonating. Next part. No one cares enough to admit any doubt they'd rather protect themselves. <sighs> People would rather fit me into a box that I don't fit into to make the paperwork look better, to make the insurance work better, rather than actually take the time to get to know me and find out the truth. Which is essentially putting their comfort over my well-being, which is unethical. 
And I've had really great past therapists and such, but it is common. And if you've been gaslit your whole life to believe that you aren't even aware of your own symptoms and they, they tell you that it's not a big deal, you tend to believe them. So my needs are put second, just like they have always been which then confirms and solidifies my worldview that everything is my fault and I don't deserve to feel my feelings or I don't have the knowledge or right to tell you that this is or isn't what's going on. No one cares enough to admit any doubt they'd rather protect themselves. They'd rather put a diagnosis that sort of fits or squeeze me to fit into that box rather than admit that they don't know and there's gray areas because it makes them more comfortable to feel certain. Next part, you had a choice to investigate, but you chose to judge and condemn me. You had a choice to get to know me and find out the truth and listen to me and really get to the core of what's going on, but you chose not to. You chose to make quick judgments based off things like my appearance, I was told, at that partial hospitalization program that, well, the way you dress. So they pretty much told me they diagnosed me with a personality disorder because of the way I dressed, in that tone, by the way. Another example is I was sent from psychiatry over to neurology because I was having these episodes where I couldn't string together a full sentence for sometimes like 12 hours. So aphasia. So. Psychiatry sends you to neurology. They run one static MRI, which doesn't really show how the brain functions. It just makes sure there's not a big mass or cancer in it. And then it's mental health sent me on my way. There was no investigation of the truth. It was just check off the box and get you out of here. We're not going to actually listen and try to figure out what's really going on. But you chose to judge and condemn me. You condemn me to treatments that won't work. And when those treatments don't work, I am continued to be blamed for not trying hard enough. With such a certainty that it made me no longer believe me. When you have these professionals saying this is what's wrong, you know, with no doubt in their mind and no ability to admit that maybe they don't know, I'm like, well... What they're saying seems to conflict with my experience, but I've been taught that I don't know what I'm talking about, so I guess they're right, but the pieces weren't fitting together. All right, so here's the chorus. I hear what you're saying, but you are wrong. So basically saying, oh, you have a personality disorder, you just need to, you know, stop making excuses and stop being entitled and you need to work harder and Stop letting yourself be so comfortable. I never let myself be comfortable. I was so self-critical. They're painting me as the one causing the problem when I'm the victim. <laughs> I'm not this shadow cast from your projection. No, I will not continue to get shame projected on me that isn't mine. I'm done with that. Rather blame me, even if it's not true, rather than just say, I'm not sure. Let's figure this out together. I know why you say it. I mean, look at me. I'm like, I understand why you'd look at me and be like, okay, your life's pretty easy. You just gotta like work a little harder and work on your character. I look like I come from a place of like money and privilege and I don't have any trouble with like race or any of those kind of like obvious physical barriers. So why am I struggling so much? And then I can't even describe this pain that you can't see. Part of my problem was inability to describe these symptoms very well. So they can't see it and I can't describe it well. No wonder, like I get why you came to these incorrect conclusions. And it says, I know that reality's on my side. And I know that because I've been putting the pieces together of who you told me I was. And I've been doing the things you told me to do. And they've actually made things worse, not better. 
So am I just lazy? Is there something wrong with me? Do I just need to like try harder even though I'm trying so hard that I'm having to be hospitalized over and over again? Or maybe the approach is wrong, which means maybe who they told me I was is the problem. Maybe it's not me. My recovery is completely my responsibility. But also if I'm treating the wrong condition, like the person who told me I wrongly had that has to take at least some of the responsibility for that. And all you have are stereotypes. When you don't get to know someone and just look at them on the outside, you fill in judgments from stereotypes in your past and that isn't who the person actually is. And then the universe is telling me that things aren't what they seem. By universe, I mean looking at it from a broader perspective, trying to put all the pieces together, trying to put all the perspectives together. I'm just like, hmm, am I that dumb and low and worthless? Or is something else going on? I think a perfect example of things aren't what they seem is this kind of new ADHD era diagnosis. It's not new, but ADHD medication actually decreases my anxiety and makes me calmer and helps me regulate my emotions more. And when you have someone who's in a hospital like kicking and screaming and holes in walls, you're like, oh, like, oh, let's give them some like something to calm them down. But that actually oftentimes made my ability to regulate worse. And now I'm finally like back on ADHD medication because I'm stable enough to where they're like, okay, we could try it again. <laughs> and with the medication, I can just like do more normal things. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't traumatic just to get through the daily tasks of the day as much. So the story of like, oh, I'm this anxious person that needs to calm down. Maybe the anxiety was actually a coping mechanism for not having the mental resources to regulate and organize myself, the things that I had to do and had no choice about because I wasn't allowed to be the person who couldn't do those things. That was something that was unacceptable and would cause rejection, which as a child is death, literal physical death, at least in their mind. It's attachment stuff. All right, second verse. I've done everything you've asked. I've taken the shame you cast without excuses. Like I said, I was doing the things they said, like not listening to my symptoms and feelings because I'm being over dramatic. I'm just looking for attention, all this stuff. And then it says, I've taken the shame you cast without excuses. I never once made an excuse. I said, yes. I'm the problem, it's my fault. I did the things, I was harder on myself, more self-critical, and guess what? Things got worse, not better. And that is how you tell the difference between the one causing the problem, oftentimes the narcissist and the victim, is the one causing the problem will never take the shame or responsibility. They will always reflect it on to someone else. I never made excuses at that program, and yet they kept treating me like crap. This next part is a specific interaction with my therapist. It's like, you need to get a job in that tone. So I did. He's like, get a part-time job. So I got a full-time job. Did twice as much as what my therapist asked in that program. And he's like, well, too soon to be a real change yet. And so the lyrics go, see your reaction tells it all. You said it wasn't a real change at all. I did twice as much as what you asked for. Instead of changing your judgment about me and saying maybe we were wrong about her, he just doubled down on the original and said, well, too soon to be a real change. As in like, I'm somehow just manipulating or faking it. It doesn't mean anything, even though I did twice as much as what he asked. Then it goes, so no matter what I do or say, your judgment of me will never change. I brought new information. I took responsibility. I did what you asked. So 
someone who has a personality disorder would not do that. So I proved you wrong and yet you still kept to the original judgment. So no matter what I do or say, your judgment of me will never change. You are not coming from truth. You are coming from a place of protecting your initial judgment about me. Because you don't want to admit that you could be wrong because it would crack their confidence or whatever. So a lot of times people who judge you, you'll spend your whole lives trying to please and appease them. But the problem with that is they're not doing it to make you better. They're doing it to make you feel small and then feel better than you. So if you prove them wrong, they'll just manipulate and gaslight because they don't actually want you to improve. Not seem like what happened here. Then it's the chorus one more time. We already talked about it, but I'll read it. There's just one other line at the end. I hear what you're saying, but you are wrong. I'm not this shadow cast from your projection. And more than I appear, I'm a person. Please get to know me and my story and what I've been through before you judge me. I know why you say it. I mean, look at me. I can't even describe this pain you can't see. So yeah, I see why you came to the conclusion. Because I... I don't have any obvious physical barriers. Plus, I'm really bad at describing the symptoms because I was having horrible aphasia. So yeah, I get why you thought that, but I know that reality is on my side. I know that when I listened to you and did what you said and did it to the best of my abilities, it didn't work. Actually, it made things much worse, which either means I am so weak and horrible and worthless as my best effort makes things worse or I'm doing the wrong thing because I'm believing the wrong thing about who I am and myself and what the real problem is. And all you have are stereotypes, which is all you have when you either don't get to know someone or aren't willing to get to the core of their truth. The universe is telling me that things aren't what they seem. I believe in me. I'm trying to like take responsibility and be tough on myself and not let myself be comfortable. And when I have these bad feelings, just keep pushing on anyway. And guess what? It almost freaking. I have to take responsibility for my life, but I can't take on everyone else's shame too. And then I believe in me. This is about taking back my power of my own identity, my own feelings, not letting people tell me how I feel or how severe it is or how I should be. Just taking my power back and trying my best to be myself. So it's a very different story. So there are two basic characters here. Is this person a spoiled, entitled princess who just needs to change her character? Or is this person someone who experienced an incredible amount of pain and an incredible amount of confusion and an incredible amount of misunderstanding? But I get to decide that. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye. I believe in me.